I'm Suzanne Hargrove. I'm the head of conservation here at the Toledo Museum of Art. As a conservator, I'm responsible for the care and well-being of the, all the artworks in the museum, which means that I'm responsible for the care and maintenance of the collection. A lot of the work that I'm involved in is called preventive maintenance. By preventive maintenance, I mean preventing damage before it happens to an artwork. What I'm concerned about is controlling the agents of deterioration that adversely affect the artworks. And those agents of deterioration are the environment. And by the environment, I mean light, temperature, and humidity, and exhibit case materials. So in terms of thinking about light, one of the areas we're particularly uh, concerned about is the amount of daylight that you see uh, hitting the collection or falling upon the collection. So you might walk into some galleries and see that there is no daylight. And that's because certain artworks are incredibly sensitive to daylight so that we do things to make sure that daylight doesn't fall on those pieces getting bigger. We want to make sure that the artworks in the collection don't experience those kinds of changes, so we keep the environment very stable. So we'll control the amount of uh, light hitting an artwork in terms of controlling the amount of daylight. We eliminate ultraviolet light hitting the collection so that we don't get any of that type of aging that happens. And we will try to keep the uh, environment factors very constant. Again, so if we do preventive maintenance, that goes a long way towards protecting the collection. The other thing I'm involved in is certainly repairing artworks and artwork may either be acquired up into the collection that has a break or a crack and I may be doing things like filling those repairs um, and doing a treatment on that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about materials used in conservation. Here you see this ancient vessel and it's uh, had a lot of things that have happened to it over its uh, long history. It's been broken, as you see, from the amount of uh, pieces here and missing pieces. And someone at some point in its life, it could even have happened before the museum acquired it, they put the piece together. And here you see perhaps when it was still in a broken state, they used tape on the neck here. Here you see residues from the tape and that can cause irreversible staining. Depending on what kinds of glues and materials were used to repair this vessel, they may be unstable and the vessel could actually fall apart. So a treatment that I would undertake on this piece is to take it completely apart, remove the tape stains, uh, hopefully I can get that tape off without causing damage to the piece or having stains left you know, you don't want to see a major square where the tape has been on the piece. And then when I would go to uh, do this treatment, I would do a few things that conservators are uh, required by uh, professional requirements for the job to, to do a, a reconstruction on this piece. First of all, I would take a photograph of it and write a thorough report as to what you see in its current state of being. So I'd record that there's these tape damages, I would record that it's been broken into many pieces. I would record that someone has uh, made an attempt to fill some of the losses in the piece and that the fills went beyond the original break line of the surface. And I would write a written report. I'd talk with the curator about this to determine what the best course of action would be and what the expected results would be for the piece. And then I would actually do the treatment, I would take it apart, I would remove all these old adhesives and fill materials, I would take the tape stains off, and then I would put the piece back together. And when I do that, I would use materials that are known for their very good aging properties. Part of our job is to use materials that we know are not going to change over time, that means they're not going to yellow, they're not going to uh, become unstable where the piece would fall apart. So, as a conservator, I'd make a complete document of the course of treatment. I would document how the piece was before I did any work on it. I would record the materials that I use, and I would make sure that all those materials that I use are stable. So what I've hoped I've done today is to give you sort of an indication of what the conservation field is all about. I want to give you an idea of 
the type of work that we do, preventive maintenance being a major function of that. If one were interested in becoming a conservator, you would need to go to school and finish high school, uh, go to, on to college and get a degree, an undergraduate degree, in what's called the related area of study. So you saw that I, a lot of our work involves art, it involves art history, uh, so you would take classes in studio art and art history. In thinking about the materials that one uses in conservation, you also need to have a good background in chemistry. So there are conservation programs. They are beyond the undergraduate level. They are graduate programs where you would, once completing an undergraduate degree in, for example, studio art, art history, or science, you would go on and apply to a conservation school. Those schools are uh, typically three-year programs. You work two years at the school learning how to do conservation work, and then your third year of study is what's called an internship year. And that's working in a museum alongside people such as myself, conservators, to actually do hands-on treatment of the collection.